Hey there, this is Dana Arcuri, author, speaker, and wellness advocate. As you can see, woo, I have a new do. So I took the plunge yesterday. I've been thinking for one year about changing my hair color. If you've been following me or subscribing to my channel, you can remember me as a blonde. And anyway, so I've been thinking for quite some time about changing my hair color. Um, I'm still a licensed hairdresser after 30 plus years and you know most hairdressers change their color their style and their look quite often and very frequently so this is really you know not too new for me I've been red before I've been many shades of red it's just you haven't ever really seen me in red so this might be new for you but it's it's just a little bolder, a little little sassy, but I like it. So let's move on to today's topic, which is signs that you have toxic siblings. And so it is very apparent that dysfunction is going on within our world, but many people might not discuss it. They might not openly admit it. It's almost like a little secret where people just kind of keep it hidden, maybe put on that look on Facebook or social media that they have it all together and they're showing pictures of a happy family. But what goes on behind the scenes tells another story and it is all about dysfunction, narcissism, and unhealthy relationships. So some of the signs of toxic siblings are the list that I'm going to give you. They may discredit you, distort the truth about you, twist every single word you say, they fabricate stories about you, anything that you may say they will probably deny it, manipulate you, minimize what you say, ignore you, and outright lie about anything you say, believe, or who you are as a person. It's very toxic. It is very unfortunate behaviors that go on. And I really personally believe it's something that we do need to just stop the silence and we need to start telling our stories. It's through these truthful stories that we could begin the healing journey to wholeness and recovery. And that is the journey I am on today. So um, some interesting experiences I've had with my siblings, and I'm going to stick with right now the most frequent, up-to-date type of situations, is that there is a lot of manipulation, a lot of distorting the truth, a lot of lies, just a cobweb of evil lies. What saddens me, just like heavy duty, like my heart is shattered, is that we're supposed to be a Christian family. Like every one of my siblings, they're supposed to be women of God. And so that is going to be saved for another video because that is a heavy, heavy topic. But I just wanted to bring it up that it makes it more painful when you're dealing with Christians who are toxic siblings. Something to think about. Um, the one thing is, and this is something recent that happened, I was invited to speak at the University of Pittsburgh in Bradford. It's a big college. A lot of people heard of the University of Pittsburgh. They have many different uh, locations and one just happens to be Bradford, PA. So I was invited to be a featured speaker in the month of May this year and to talk and to share my own rock bottom story about the fibromyalgia and the wicked withdrawals to all the prescription meds and my recovery and giving hope and healing to hundreds and hundreds of women. And it's an honor. I mean, when you get asked to be a featured speaker to this beautiful platform, it is just such a humbling honor to have this opportunity. And so I was excited and I told my siblings and I told my mother and I, you know, told different people, different relatives and, you know, talking about it because I was just absolutely thrilled. It was great news. And yet my siblings didn't respond. 
like it was great news. So one sign of toxic siblings is they will not cheer you on, be happy for your success, be happy that you're living out your passionate purpose, and they will not applaud your achievements. Instead, they'll do the opposite. They will minimize it. They will ignore it. They will find way to criticize you. So instead of my siblings, four siblings, you know, four siblings, I'm the baby in the family who happens to be the black sheep. Raise your hand if you're the baby in the, in the family. I think that's um, something in which they're, they've always had jealousy. That's another sign of siblings that are dysfunctional and there's that whole narcissism going on. They are so jealous and envious, and it is very deep-rooted. I can't sit here and say, why? You know, I, I mean, hey, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychotherapist. They're gonna need some heavy-duty psychotherapy to unravel this pattern and life of the dysfunction. But what I can say is, you know, instead of my sisters just saying, hey, I am so happy for you. Wow, that's exciting news. You're speaking and you're doing what you love and what you're passionate about and you're, you're living out your God-given purpose and talents in life. No, instead they try to shame me, blame me, and say, why aren't you going to this family function on this day? And I said, because eight months ago, before you even told me about the family function, I already had an invitation that I accepted to speak at this very important women's conference. And so there, there was no happiness on their part. There was no, you know, cheering me on and congratulating me and, and the whole joy and encouragement and being there to have this wonderful opportunity to kind of come side by side with me and just, you know, enjoy this moment. But no, no, they wanted to find fault. They wanted to find criticism. They wanted to make me feel bad. And, and so, you know, I'm going to just call it out. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad that I didn't go to a family function. I don't feel bad that I'm following my God-given purpose in life. I am absolutely honored that God opened up this door and I knew that this only happened because it was from the Lord above. So that is the one sign. The other one is, so I ended up going with my husband to visit my father who has Alzheimer's and a very bad heart condition. He's in a facility for senior citizens who have Alzheimer's and dementia. And it's a very, very sad, heartbreaking circumstance. But I wanted to be there for him because hospice began, or so I was told hospice started. And so my husband and I decided to independently, without my siblings, visit my father out of state. So we went and visited him out of state, and I can honestly say God's handprint was all over that weekend. My dad was speaking to me and talking to me about things that I never even knew. He opened up to me. You know, there was this safe place with my dad and I, this beautiful moment, you know, and, and I can't even get into the whole thing about my dad and how we went like we've gone years and years, 50 plus years with a really rocky relationship. You know, the whole father effect, the wounded, the wounded heart and the bad feelings and the bad experiences. And that's a whole other story, but I have that on my video called the father effect. But let's just get to the gist of it. And that is, it was a beautiful moment with my dad, a time of reconciliation, a time of healing, a time of restoring this broken relationship. This is what we want, people. We want to heal from the dysfunction. And so I am blessed that I had this wonderful opportunity to visit my dad and spend all this time with him and to have him open up and be very genuine with me, very loving with me. And I'll admit there were times his memory failed. There were times, you know, when I was there for the first 20 minutes, my dad didn't even know it was me. Like when you have Alzheimer's, there are times you forget things and you don't remember things and he's in advanced stages. So there were times his, his memory kind of came and it went, came and it went. 
But boy, when that memory came and he remembered it was me, wow, these are fond memories that I will hold near and dear to my heart forever because there is nothing more in this world that I want than to restore my relationships with my dysfunctional family. And so even though today the rest of my family is in cahoots with me and we have the whole family rift going on, I'm the bad one, I'm the black sheep of the family, I am just praising the Lord today that my relationship with my father is healed and God redeemed it, God restored it, and there is forgiveness. And this is a huge breakthrough. But what happened was when I returned home, I'm on cloud nine. You know, I come home, I'm on cloud nine. The Lord answered my prayer. My relationship with my, with my dad is healed. We have restored the brokenness, all of these tragedies that happened, all these different misunderstandings and negativity. It has been just the slate is clean. The slate is clean. And that's what God does. He cleans the slate. And so many of us, we want that. We want that. And so I want to give you hope. There's still hope. Even with your dysfunctional, toxic siblings and parents, there is hope. As long as you breathe, there is hope. And so what happened is I came home, I'm happy, and I started sharing. So I ended up seeing my one sister and started talking to her and saying, hey, this is what happened, and I'm telling her all about it, and I'm all excited. And she says, well, I was looking at your Facebook post the other day because I wanted to see if you talked about going to see dad, and I wanted to see if you posted pictures with you and dad, and I don't think what you said is true. And it just kind of took me back. I had to kind of just like take a deep breath because I was speechless, just speechless that she's minimizing and claiming that what I shared on social media is not true. Now, for one, I'm not gonna share something that's inaccurate. I am going to give my perception of something. I'm going to be as authentic, as real, and as upfront and as honest as can be. So that's one sign of a toxic sibling. They're, they're going to find ways to criticize you, to say that you are the one telling false lies when truly you are not. They're gonna find ways to rip apart anything positive. So for an example, I had a very positive, uplifting experience with my father. It was a wonderful weekend. Restoration, healing, you know, hey, it was awesome, but yet it ends up. The two of my sisters started chatting about what I posted on Facebook. Mind you, they're both blocked on my own channel, my own Facebook page, but she was able to take a little sneak peek at my author page because it's public. And unless I block someone 100%, there's a good chance they could kind of creep on my page, on my author page. And so they were basically saying that, no, dad never said that. No, I never heard that about dad. So my father, when I was visiting, told war stories. My dad was in the Korean War. He fought the war, he survived the war. He's a hero, my dad is a hero. Anyone who has fought the war, anyone who's a serviceman, a service woman, people who sacrifice their own lives for the freedom of our country, they are heroes. And we, we really need to respect them. And I respect these stories. So when my dad shared openly some stories that were quite horrific of what he went through, you know, it was truthful. And I just shared what he shared. And my sisters basically said, no, no, he was hallucinating. No, no, he didn't say that. And once again, it's just the same old, same old, that, you know, they'll discredit you. They will dismantle you. They will find way to make you have this beautiful, glorious moment and they'll turn it into pure crap because they don't want you happy. They don't want you to achieve. They don't want you to find um, joy and happiness and healing. They want you stuck in a rut just like them. Why? Because they have some serious problems with dysfunction. And so today, if you are experiencing ongoing troubles with your siblings, with your family, or relationships that are toxic and dysfunctional, you need to come up with a plan. And we'll have to talk about that in future videos, but there needs to be a plan to guard your heart, people, and step away from the drama. Thank you and God bless.